I've been a tech YouTuber for almost an entire week now, and one of the most common questions I get is, how did you get here? So in this video, I'm going to share the story of how I went from never writing a line of code to becoming a Facebook software engineer. This video is not meant to be some blueprint for how to become a software engineer or how to get a job at Facebook. The reality is that all of our circumstances are different, and if you do the exact same things that I did, you are not going to get the same results. But what you can do is try to listen to my story and find some key takeaways. What are things from my story that you can apply to your own journey, no matter where you are in the process and what your goals are? Now, I wasn't born knowing how to code. I wasn't a child of prodigy. I didn't start doing calculus at the age of seven. But my story does start from a very young age. Let me try to set the stage. The year is 2011. Neon Cat has just become the most viral video on the internet, Rebecca Black has told us that it is in fact Friday, and planking has become a worldwide phenomenon. But most importantly to this entire year is that I started the 8th grade, and in the 8th grade I took a robotics class at my school. In this class they didn't teach us how to code, so I wasn't writing Python or Java in the 8th grade, but what we were doing is using Lego Mindstorms. So if you're not familiar, this is basically a product where you build some Legos, you can add motors and sensors to the Legos, and then you use this drag and drop programming language to actually control the Legos. So I didn't realize it at the time, but that drag and drop programming language was my first programming language. That was the first time that I was learning how to code, and I didn't even know that that's what I was doing, but I was absolutely hooked. This ability to think of an idea and then build a robot to do what I thought of and then program the robot and have it come to life felt like a superpower, and all I wanted to do was learn more. Now, later in the year, we transitioned away from LEGO Mindstorms, and we started using VEX Robotics. So this meant that we were no longer playing with LEGOs, and we were building real robots with metal. This felt like a huge upgrade, like we went from playing with a children's toy to doing true robotics. And I don't know how to this day, but somehow we managed to actually qualify for the VEX Robotics World Championship, which that year was being held in Anaheim, California. This event was huge for me. Now, I didn't win a Robotics World Championship, but what did happen was I got to take a trip from Texas where I grew up all the way to California. And I didn't do this with my parents. I did it with the school, with chaperones, but it felt like something that I earned, like something I deserved, something I'd worked hard for. And as a result of that, it felt like this big success, and it got me even more hooked on robotics and more hooked on programming, even though I didn't at this time even know how to code. Okay, so now let's transition a little bit forward in time to 2012. I am beginning high school. The Mayan calendar is about to end, meaning that we have an impending doomsday, but life did go on, and I continued to grow this love and fascination for computers and eventually programming. Now, my high school had no robotics class, so naturally, I just became less interested in robotics. But over time, I became obsessed with this idea of building mobile apps. So I spent all of my free time trying to learn how to build mobile apps and specifically mobile games online. I was watching YouTube tutorials, I was going through Codecademy, and really doing everything I could to learn. I also started learning Unity 3D at the time, which is a game engine. And I actually was able to build some pretty interesting games. But in reality, I was mostly just copy pasting code that I found in some tutorial into my own games, so it wasn't like I was really building much from scratch. Although, now that I think about it, to this day I pretty much spend most of my day copy and pasting code from online, so maybe not all that much has changed. Anyways, at this point I had made some progress. I was learning a little bit about how to code, but nothing crazy, just the basics of for loops, if statements, etc. Now the next few years were more of the same. I didn't really learn anything more about programming. I was still dabbling in Unity 3D, but I wasn't making much progress. And this was until my senior year of high school started, which was in 2015. I spent most of this year debating on whether or not a picture of a dress was blue and black or white and gold. It is of course blue and black. But once I was done with that debate, I took my first formal programming class, and that was AP Computer Science. In this class we learned Java, and by no means did I become an expert, but I did learn a lot. I was able to, by the end of this class, take a blank file and turn it into a working 
basic Java class. So I could sort of take nothing and create something with it. This was similar to when I was doing robotics in the eighth grade, and I was able to start with nothing and end up with a robot that did something. And this feeling, again, was absolutely amazing. And it continued me along this journey of just getting more and more hooked on this idea of programming. Now, transitioning forward once again, in September of 2016, I started college at the University of Washington with the intent to major in computer science. During my first year of college, I took a few different computer science classes, with the most notable being a class on web development. In this class, I learned how to center my first div, I learned how to write a web server in everyone's favorite backend language, PHP, and I felt like I was really getting a hang of this web development thing. I had always assumed that I would do machine learning or work in some other niche within computer science that was trendy, but this class changed that perspective completely. I realized how much I loved web development. At the end of the quarter, I spoke to the professor who was teaching the class next year, and he agreed to give me a teaching assistant job, which I felt so incredibly underqualified for, but at the same time, I was excited, so I took the job. This was the end of my first year of college, and during this time, I'd also been applying to internships, but unfortunately, I did get rejected from every single company I applied to, so over the summer, I just focused on some different personal projects that I could add to my resume instead. Now, in my second year of college, I started this job as a teaching assistant for the web development class I'd taken the year prior, and I, to this day, have no idea why they let a sophomore teach a class of college students, but they did, and I had the worst imposter syndrome of my life, but everything turned out okay, the class went great, I think the students enjoyed it a lot, and I had a great experience too. During my second year of college, I also took a bunch of other computer science classes, but at the same time, I took some classes in the informatics major. This major is similar to computer science, but instead of focusing on the mathematical theory of why computers work, it was focused on how we can use computers to actually build things. And this to me was a lot more interesting. Now UW has this competitive major system, or at least at the time they did. And what this means is that you have to apply to your major after you take some classes as prerequisites. And computer science, being as popular as it is, was one of the hardest majors to get into. Informatics is also pretty competitive, but not on the same scale as computer science. So I didn't really know if I would ever actually get into computer science. My grades were good, but they weren't amazing. And at the same time, I also just really enjoyed these informatics classes, so I decided to not even finish the computer science prerequisites, and instead I focused on informatics, which I applied to, and on the first go-around I actually did get rejected, but eventually I applied again, and I was able to get into informatics, which became my major and what I majored in throughout the rest of college. This year I was also much more serious about the idea of getting an internship, so I applied to as many companies as I could. My strategy was simple. If I applied to every company in the world, at least one of them is bound to make a mistake and give me a job. Now, this is probably not the best mindset, but that's the mindset I had, and that's what I did, and I started just getting flooded with rejection emails. And even to this day, I still get rejection emails from when I was applying to internships back in college. I'm not sure how this happens because the internship has passed, but about every six months, I still get a rejection email. So anyways, I apply to all of these companies, and I end up getting three on-site interviews. Now, of these three companies, the only one I got an offer from was actually Facebook. And this is such a key takeaway. Never, ever reject yourself from a company. I thought I had no chance of getting a Facebook internship, but I thought, why not? I'll apply here too. And I did, and this ended up being the only offer I got. So had I just not applied to Facebook because I thought I had no chance, I never would have gotten that offer, and I never would have gotten here today. So never reject yourself is really one of the most key takeaways from my entire story. I remember exactly when I actually got the offer. I was on the phone with my mom. And we were talking about something random, nothing related to computer science or programming or anything like that. And I hadn't even told her that I was applying to these internships because I didn't want her to feel bad when inevitably I got rejected. But I get the email and it tells me that I have the offer and I start freaking out. I'm going crazy, I'm so excited. I tell her what happened, she gets super excited. And it was just this amazing moment. I felt like I had no chance to get here, but it was happening. I felt like all of this work I'd been putting in for years was finally starting to pay off. Over that summer, I did my internship at Facebook. 
I worked on a team called Nuclide, which built an internal IDE that Facebook was using. And this was a super cool project. For one, it was using React, which I had wanted to learn. So I got to take a deep dive into that ecosystem. But also, it was just cool working on a project that you could see the other engineers using. In fact, my intern project when I left the company was still being used on a consistent basis. So now after my Facebook internship, I go back to UW. I actually get promoted to being the head teaching assistant for the web development class. And crazy enough, when I look back at college, I think teaching this class was by far the biggest learning experience I ever had. I think I actually learned more as a teaching assistant for that class than I learned when I took the class. And probably than I learned when I took all of my classes combined. As an example of how I was learning so much as a teaching assistant, we had this online discussion board, and it was sort of like a Stack Overflow, but just for our students. And I got obsessed with this discussion board. I think in the time I was a TA, I probably answered somewhere between 1,000 and 1,500 questions on this discussion board. But what that resulted in was students would ask a question, and I might know the answer, I might not. If I knew the answer, then maybe I would just type it out. But most of the time, I would end up looking it up to make sure that my answer was perfect. And if I didn't know the answer, then I would go do some research. And what this meant was that I spent so much time going on these deep rabbit hole, deep dives through all of these different pieces of documentation and just learning things that I never would have looked up if it wasn't for a student asking me. So through this discussion board, I actually probably learned more than any of my classes. And there were all of these different examples of things like this where students ask questions or Maybe a student does something interesting on a homework assignment that I'm grading, and I just learn a bunch from what they're doing. Now, throughout the third year of college, I am applying to even more internships. I don't apply to quite as many as I did the year prior, but I do apply to a lot. And this time I do have my Facebook return offer. So I'm basically just applying to companies that I would consider going to over Facebook. And I, to my surprise, hear back from almost every company I apply to. So I very quickly learned that once you have some experience on your resume, it becomes just infinitely easier to get other jobs. So I end up with a few different offers, but the three I'm really considering are Facebook, Google, and Lyft. And I don't want to leave Facebook. I don't want to lose that offer essentially, or the potential to have a full-time offer, but I also want to try something else. So what I decide on is I do a Lyft internship in the summer, and then in the fall, I did the Facebook internship. So I took fall quarter off so that I could still do the Facebook internship, but still accept another internship so I could have some experience working at different companies. So at Lyft, I decided to do more backend work so that I could get some experience doing something different and see how that compares to the front end work I had done before. So I worked on an infrastructure team. I quickly learned that backend just isn't for me. It was a good experience, but I did not enjoy the backend work as much as frontend work. And then at Facebook, I worked on the front end of Facebook Marketplace, which again, ended up being an amazing experience. And from here, it was really all history. I graduated from college in June of 2020. And on August 3rd, 2020, I started at Facebook full time as a software engineer. And now it's crazy to think that not that long ago, I saw Facebook as this dream job this thing that I would never be able to attain. It was going to take me forever if I did get there, but it felt impossible. And I was able to do it. I was able to make it there. And I'm just so incredibly thankful for all of the opportunities that I've been given, all of the people who took risks on me, whether it be the professor who gave me that first TA job or the recruiter who reached out to me from Facebook when every other company was rejecting me. I'm just so incredibly grateful for that entire process. And it was an amazing, amazing journey. And now with that said, that is the end of the story of how I became a Facebook software engineer, but it is not the end of my story or my journey. So if you are interested in hearing more content from me or content like this, or maybe just other content about software engineering and front-end engineering, then do make sure to hit the subscribe button down below, and I will see you in the next video.